Hi everyone, I've got something really fun to explore with you today. So this is one of the Tombow ABT Pro starter sets and I think there are three but there might be more so don't quote me on that. This particular one teaches you how to draw and colour a really cute little pug and a cup of coffee. You've got everything you need including the markers, the paper and the instruction including a QR code for those more visual learners so you can watch the video tutorial. So this is the Tombow ABT Pro. Now the ABT Pro are Tombow's alcohol-based markers. If you've heard of Tombow markers and Tombow pens before, you've probably heard of the normal ABT ones that are water-based. And to be fair, they do look quite similar, but you'll find that the ABT Pros have this grey barrel, whereas the Tombow water-based pens have the black barrel. So that's how you can tell them apart. So um, let's just have a look at the box. Really nice little package set. You could give this as a gift to an arty friend or just treat yourself. And on the back here you can see it tells you what we've got inside and all of the different information in the languages. So without further ado, let's open the box and see what's inside. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got our pad of Bristol paper, which I believe is a really high quality paper for drawing and colouring on. It's 250 GSM, which is 120 pounds, and it's a 5.8 by 8.3 inch A5 size pad. There's 25 sheets included. So, you know, plenty of practice, even if you're just doing these two projects, or whether you're going to use this paper on you know all sorts of other projects they've given you a proper pad rather than just a few sheets which is really good we've then got the step-by-step -step guide to coloring the pug and the cappuccino so we'll be going through that together as uh, we do the projects there's the qr code on the back for you to do the video tutorial see that online then we've got the four markers themselves so we've got four shades of brown or rather I would say three shades of brown and then a kind of a, a, a warm grey colour. So the actual colours included are PN69, P942, P907 and P879. So there's all the colours. So I think we should just get started in one of these projects, don't you? See what we can uh, see what we can come up with. So the creator of these projects is someone called Tanya Gear. Hopefully I'm saying that right. So, with the pug, we have to do a bit of a sketch. Now, there is a outline template to cut out. Here it says on page seven, so that's here. So I guess we can cut that out, and I don't think we'll be able to put it underneath and trace it, because that paper is really, really thick. But I guess we've got to try and do our best to draw it. So, <laughs> let's have a go. I'm gonna try my best and uh, see what happens. So I thought it'd be a good idea to create some grid lines over the image in the book and then copy those grid lines across to the paper pad and do our drawing that way because I'm not great at freehand drawing. Um, now usually with grid lines you are supposed to keep the measurements all the same across the two different things but to be honest with you I just made sure that there was the same amount of lines and squares and I didn't really bother with measuring them so my dog probably won't have the same proportions as the one in the book. So if I was doing it properly, I would have measured out the grid lines, um, you know, to the millimetre. But I didn't. So <laughs> what we get is what we get. But as you can see, it's coming along quite nicely. And I think it really helps to put this grid in, especially if you're not confident with drawing by hand. And you can sort of do it little bit by little bit and get the different features of the drawing sort of where they're meant to be. So I think we've done all right on the drawing part. Let's see how we go with the colouring. Okay, so that is my initial sketch done. Now we'll move on to the actual colouring step. So this is the bit where I'm slightly more confident with what I'm doing. Um, so it says step one, start colouring your pug with the light shade number ATB 94210. So that's this one. Start with the contour and then colour in the surface. You can use the chisel tip to fill out all the large surfaces. The fine brush tip of the ABT Pro is best for fine lines. By applying the colour repeatedly, shadows and depth emerge at the desired locations. You will notice the paper does not get soaked or destroyed thanks to the alcohol-based ink contained in the ABT Pro. So this paper should be able to handle the alcohol markers it certainly feels thick and smooth enough to do so so we'll see how it goes and see how much bleed through we get on the other side um 
yeah so let's try step one so I'm going in with the marker doing the contour areas first because with alcohol ink the more you layer them the darker and the more depth you get out of the colour. So doing the contours first means that we will see those contours even as we put a second layer of colour over the top. Now for the ears and snout and I was really struggling to get these looking like they did in the example in the book. This might be a case of me having to watch the video on the QR and see exactly her technique because there's only so much you can describe and explain in text and images so maybe I should have done that. I'll try it on the next one, the coffee one. But um, I think it went all right. I mean in the end they seemed to blend together. The thing is with alcohol markers is that you have to trust the process and I find it very difficult sometimes to do that even though I've done it many many times and I know that that's what you have to do. You kind of have to do as much as you think you should blending wise and then the rest will be done as the markers dry. It will do it itself. So it's very very difficult not to keep messing around with it trying to get that smooth look and just kind of leaving the markers to their own devices in order to do that. So on the snout, as you can see, it starts off looking very blocky, but as they dry, they do blend nicely together. I thought it was quite bright compared to the uh, the image in the book, so I just used a layer of grey over the whole thing, and that really served to tone it down, so that was a good choice, I think. The one thing that I knew I would have to get right on this was the eyes. I think whenever you're doing pet portraits, the eyes are really, really important to get right or it can look very weird. But I'm really pleased with how they turned out. As per the book's instructions, I'm now going over all of the little folds and creases in the pup's skin just to redefine them a little bit more and really create that look of squidgy um, creased folds. And I think it's worked quite well. Again, just blending them out with the lightest colour so that they don't look as stark. So I realised here I'd left a big blank space underneath his bow tie, so I filled that in with the lightest colour. Now the bow tie itself, I really struggled with getting the depth right. I couldn't get it looking 3D and I just couldn't emulate what was in the book at all. I tried layering the darkest brown and the grey lots and lots of times, but I don't think it turned out as well as it could have had I had more practice with this kind of thing. Here I'm just redefining some of those folds in the skin again using the spice colour which is the lightest of the two browns and some of the grey as well over the top and just redoing it and blending it as many times as I feel I need to to get it looking kind of right. Now at this point I started to realise that if I really pushed down the tip of the marker I could get a really thick layer of colour that sat on the surface of the Bristol paper for a few seconds before soaking into it and that meant that I could use a lighter colour to sort of drag out that darker pigment and blend it all really really nicely and I think I got a really good blend effect so I wish I'd known that a little bit earlier in the process but um, yeah it, it helped me really blend the dark brown and the light brown together because there is quite a difference in between those two shades. And finally, I am just using that technique of puddling the ink and blending it out on the ears and the face where I wanted to get a little bit more depth than I've managed to achieve before. So there he is, our cute little pug. I've erased all of the construction lines around him and uh, yeah, I think it's turned out really well. If we just compare it to uh, the original illustration. I don't think it's quite as pug looking as the original but I'm not an artist so I don't mind that. I think probably I could have stretched out this area a little bit more around the snout and maybe made use of lighter highlights between all of the creases that might have helped but I'm quite pleased with it. I think it's gone all right for a first go. So the paper itself, as I mentioned before, is really, really smooth and it does allow the ink to sit on top of it for a little while, a very short while. Um, so you can get in there quick and blend, but you do have to be fast about it. As for bleeding, as you can see, it goes through to the other side, which I totally expected anyway. But it also does um, imprint on the next sheet as well, so you will have to use something underneath. So let's have a go at the cappuccino then. So it says, first of all, we need to sketch in our pencil lines. So I think I'm going to need my compass for this to get a nice circular shape for the cup. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So just popping those initial shapes down with my compass, doing the uh, sketch work very lightly so that it can be erased 
or covered up by the ink as well. Then just adding in details by hand, like the pattern in the foam and the handle of the cup, and of course, the two wafer rolls sitting on the side of the saucer. The first thing it tells you to do is put a layer of the lightest brown down, the tan colour. And again, it says to do the contours first, but there isn't really any contours on this bit with the light colour anyway, because most of it is covered by this mid-brown, the spice colour. So just trying to copy it as best I can from the book. I probably should have got that QR code video up. I know I said I was going to, and then I completely forgot. And before I knew it, I was into the project and I didn't want to stop to set it all up. So I'm just adding in different highlights and shadows here and there, um, trying to keep the width of that cup all the way around really straight and uh, uniform. But there were some points later on in the project that I did whip the white gel pen out just to uh, get rid of any stray ink that had gone over the lines. So at this point, I'm just doing the shading on the saucer. Quite difficult actually to build up shading with such a light colour, but if you just keep going over and over the same areas again, you will notice a very subtle change. Using the grey, which I feel is a bit too much of a dark grey really for, for um, light shadows like this. I think they could have used a grey that was just tonally slightly lighter. So I'm doing the edges of the wafer rolls and I know at this point that I've gone too thick on them. And to be brutally honest, I did sit and look at this for a good five minutes wondering whether I should carry on because I just, I think I totally messed up on the wafer rolls, way, way too thick on the edges. And again, it's that gray, it really just seemed to take everything over. So what I thought I'd do is just add even more depth and darkness to the dark areas to see if adding contrast would draw the eye away and try and make it look slightly more realistic, which I think has worked to an extent. Obviously it's not perfect like the one in the book, but for a first go, just like the pug, I don't think I did that bad. So I'm coming in here with the white, as you can see, just trying to make the lip of the cup all uniform. And yeah, I, uh, I think it looks okay. So here are our two finished pieces. And as you can see, this is what they're supposed to look like. And I don't think mine are too far off. There are obvious differences and clear ways that I could improve if I did this again. But I think for a first go, not too bad. As a set itself, I had a lot of fun doing it, so I can recommend you buying it if you would like to try and up-level your skills and just give a new project a go, I suppose. Maybe if you haven't used alcohol markers before, you might want to have a go with the Tombow ABT Pros because they do have that lovely brush tip akin to the Copic markers. And they have all the instructions within the book. Also, in the back of the book, you can see that there is a blending chart for all of the colours in the ABT Pro range and it tells you how to uh, figure out the colour families and stuff and also in the back there's a little swatch of every colour that you can buy currently I believe 107 single colours plus a blender and there are some of the packs that you can buy that have been curated into different colours like basic, pastel, grey, landscape, manga and portrait. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me try to <laughs> complete some of the challenges from this set. Uh, I think I've done all right. Let me know in the comments what you think. There are, as I mentioned before, a couple of different sets, which I will also link to in the description below. So if the whole brown thing isn't for you, you might want to try something a little bit brighter. Um, you can have a look there and see what else they do. So do let me know what you think and I will speak to you soon on Colour with Claire.